Today's video is going to be a bit of a fun one. I was looking for a way to see if I can add an onboard display onto my drone and did some googling and sure enough came up with uh, the, uh, the documentation on the ArduPilot page that shows that you can connect a little OLED display to your drone. And this thing was super cool. This is optional for your drone. It's a little bit of a fun thing though that I figured we'd play around with today. And when you hook it up, it, it connects to the I2C bus on your flight controller. And you'll end up getting uh, basic GPS status information, battery uh, levels, um, you'll get its arming, if it's armed or not, you will get the flight mode, and you'll get basic warning messages across the top that shows if it's having trouble arming or not. So, pretty neat thing. Today we'll walk through how I connected this thing. It's very, very simple, very straightforward wiring. Um, we got the, the OLED display, we got a, a little wire that we built to, to connect the two, and I've got one of these I squared C can extension adapters that we can use to make a little bit of a hub. So come on over to the bench and we'll get this thing started. We'll wire it up, configure it in Mission Planner, and show a demo of it working. All right, let's get going. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and remove my GPS for the moment so we can get a clearer shot at where we're going to be connecting the wires for this OLED display. What you're going to need for this is an I2C, I2C cable that came with your core carrier board or your cube pilot. You're going to need this I2C kind of extender that should have come with your cube as well or your core carrier board. And I also, in the bill of materials, ordered three more of these, so that's how I have plenty for um, the ones that I'm using for the CAN bus down here. And the other piece you're gonna need is your display. Now this display comes with a four pin header already soldered to it. And what I did off of Amazon, I bought two kinds of wires. I bought one set of wires that are these DuPont connectors with a wire already crimped into it and it has a DuPont connector at each end. What I did was I cut off the DuPont connector from one end. So that gives me a connector that I can easily plug on for prototyping here. And then at the other end I bought a four pin JST GH connector that already had the wires crimped into it and I cut off the other end of it and then what I did was I simply just soldered the wires together and put some heat shrink tubing to make a cable that has these DuPont connectors that are adapting to a JST GH connector four pin okay so first step is pretty simple we're going to take our I squared C cable and we're going to plug it into the I squared C one port on the core carrier board. That's this one up here. If you're looking at the, um, the core carrier board from its orientation where it should be pointing to the front of the drone, it would be almost in this top right. It's just to the left of where we plugged in the here link air unit. Okay. So next item is we're going to take our I squared C expansion board and we're going to plug the other end of the cable into it. Looks a little bit like that. Pretty simple so far. So like I said, you have to have this cable pre-made and the way it's wired, I'll try and put a picture in the video here, is on your OLED display, you've got four pins, you've got Oops, let's see if I can show this up close. It's got ground, 5 volt voltage, SCL, and SDA for your clock and data lines for the I squared C bus. Okay. And so, what you need to do is if you were to orient your JSTGH connection so that the clip is on the top. If you're gonna to look at it, I go red, yellow, blue, and black 
for the way I made my wires. Now red is going to go to the VCC connection on the OLED display. Black goes to the ground connection on the OLED display. Blue is going to the SDA connection. And yellow is going to the SCL connection. Okay, so it's important that you get this wiring orientation uh, configured correctly. That's the hardest part of this whole setup, honestly. It took a little bit to go look up the documentation on the wiring and pinouts and make this table or this cable. Once you have it, you're simply going to plug it into your little hub here. Okay, so that will click in there. All right. So that's the finished assembly. This one is really easy to do. You can also see the display comes with four screw holes already in it, so you can mount it to something. I have no idea where I'm going to mount this on my drone yet, but you know, for now I'm testing the different electronics and figuring out what might be useful on this on this build. So right now we got to go over to Mission Planner and we've got to enable a parameter to tell it that this display exists in the in the drone and that it's connected to the I squared C bus. And once you set that parameter and you reboot your flight controller, you should start seeing information display on this this display. So we'll hop on over to Mission Planner now, do that configuration, and then we'll come back here and show what the finished product looks like. If you go to the link that I have in the description of this video, it will take you to my GitHub repository for this project. You'll land at a page that looks like this, which has a link towards the bottom that will take you to the wiki documentation home folder. Go ahead and click on it and it should take you to a page that has everything pretty much organized in the way you should read through this and process it to build your own drone. There's a, a playlist. We'll take you to the entire YouTube playlist for the video series I'm creating right now. Prep work, the bill of materials. This bill of materials has every uh, part that you should buy and a link to it. But down below you'll see there's a link for this video itself, the onboard OLED display. So this is video number seven and Number seven in this list is the OLED display. Go ahead and click on it. And it's a lightweight page. It will tell you, you know, we're setting up the SSD 1306 OLED display. And there's a link to this video on that page. And then lastly, most of these pages have a link to this master RD pilot configuration page that I'm compiling that tracks every change we're making to the flight controller settings. So if you scroll down in here, I've got it by section, right? How to set up the core carrier board, the here for GPS. We did all this in previous videos. There's one here for the onboard OLED display. And you can see in Mission Planner, you need to go set the NTF underscore display underscore type to a value of one. So we can go over and do that now. I've got Mission Planner already connected to my flight controller. In previous videos, you can see how I set up the Wi-Fi access point on the Here Link controller, and then my computer connects to that Wi-Fi access point, and Mission Planner um, from my PC connects using that. Connect however you can, though. You can use a straight USB cable if you need to. All you're going to do is go, in and go into the Config tab up here, and then the Full Parameter list, and there is only one parameter that we need to set. It's the NTF display type. So I'm going to search and filter to that parameter, and you can see it currently has a value of zero to disable it. If you click on this drop options drop down here, it will let you pick from a list, and in our case we're using SSD 1306, and when you pick the right value, it will set it to a value of one. The other thing you can do is just double click in this field and type in whatever you want. You can type in a zero, type in a one, right? And it will map to the appropriate drop-down list value. 
So I'm setting it to 1, SSD 1306. I'm going to write parameters to make that take effect on my flight controller. And then I'm going to press Control F, which will bring up my kind of quick actions menu, and I'm going to go ahead and reboot the Pixhawk. Once this finishes rebooting, then you should see data start to display on your display, on your OLED display. So let's go ahead over to the other camera view, and I'll start to show what this looks like after it reboots. Okay, now that we've adjusted the settings in Mission Planner, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my battery over here on the, on the side. And everything is going to start booting up, and in a second here, you'll start to see information display on this display. Oops, it's upside down. So it's saying calibrating barometer, KF3 active, right? It's going through kind of some startup log messages that it's showing on here. It's also showing that the mode is stabilized. The battery is at 38.79 volts. GPS does not have a fix. Pre-arm has failed. And the EKF common filter is okay. So I'm not sure if this camera is capturing the actual text where you can read it or not. Let's see if I can get it to focus a little bit better. You can see at the top too, periodically you're seeing a little yellow display with a warning message. There it goes, pre-arm, compasses are inconsistent, right, because I moved that GPS component. But really, that's all there is to this display. Pretty neat little thing and very easy to set up and configure. Props to the Ardu Pilot team for making this about as simple as it gets. So, all right, have fun hooking up one of your own.